Xin chào quý trưởng và các em. This is a big one. We go to church every Sunday to celebrate Mass, but do we actually know what's going on? In this video, I hope to teach you about the order of Mass and what's going on during the celebration in the easiest way to understand possible. I'm Mike Vincent, and welcome back to another episode of Labang 101. Now this is a big topic, so I will only go over each part briefly, otherwise this video will be an hour long. I will link more resources in the description for those interested in learning more. But without further ado, let's start at the beginning. There's a lot to cover, so please bear with me. Now we can't learn about the order of Mass if we don't know what Mass is. Mass is a dual character, meaning it serves two purposes. You can think of Mass as a sacred meal, a fancy banquet, or a family dinner. At Mass, we are all nourished from the same table, regardless of what we look like or where we come from. The Mass is also the sacrifice of Christ. He offered Himself once and forever on the cross. At Mass, the people of God are called together to celebrate the Eucharistic sacrifice with a priest residing, acting in the person of Christ. It is the center of our Christian life and the thanks offering we present to God for His great love toward us. Mass has two principal parts, the Liturgy of the Word and the Liturgy of the Eucharist. It begins with the introductory rites and ends with the concluding rites. Mass begins with the introductory rites, and there are five parts to it. There's the entrance, the greeting, the penitential act, the glory to God, and the collect. Mass begins with an entrance song. The priests and other ministers enter in procession and reverence the altar with a bow or kiss. The altar is a symbol of Christ at the heart of the assembly. At the greeting, all make the sign of the cross, and the celebrant extends a greeting to the gathered people. He could say something like, Welcome to the 33rd Sunday of Ordinary Time, or we are here today to celebrate the solemnity of Christ the King, depending on what Mass is being celebrated that day. Next is the penitential act. This is where the faithful recall their sins and place their trust in God's mercy. It includes the Kyrie eleison, a Greek phrase meaning, Lord have mercy, or in Vietnamese, Xin Chúa Thần Sóc Chúng Con. Next, only on Sundays, solemnities, and feasts, the Gloria will follow the penitential act. It begins by echoing what the angel said at the birth of Christ. Glory to God in the highest. Vinh danh Thiên Chúa trên các tầng trời. Praising and adoring God the Father and Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Lastly is the Collect, an opening prayer that concludes the introductory rites and prepares the faithful to hear the Word of God. The Liturgy of the Word is next, and it's made up of many readings. On a normal Sunday, you'll hear the first reading, the responsorial psalms, the second reading, the gospel acclamation, the gospel, the homily, then the profession of faith, and then the universal prayer, also called the prayers of the faithful. Most of the liturgy of the word is made up of readings from scripture. On Sundays and solemnities, there are three scripture readings. During most of the year, the first reading is from the Old Testament and the second reading is from the New Testament letters. The last reading is always taken from one of the four Gospels. Scriptures are the Word of God where He speaks to us. Following the first reading is the Responsorial Psalms. It is sung between the readings and helps us to meditate on the Word of God. And after the second reading is the Gospel Acclamation. It introduces the Gospel, where we acclaim Alleluia, a Hebrew phrase meaning, Praise the Lord. Next is the Gospel, which is the high point of the Liturgy of the Word. Gospels tell of the life, ministry, and preaching of Jesus Christ. A deacon usually reads the Gospels. If there is not one, then the priest will. Then a priest or deacon will preach the homily, which will teach the faithful about the lessons in the scriptures and how to grow in holiness. And following the homily will be the profession of faith. Only on Sundays, solemnities, and other special occasions. 
the faithful will recite either the Nicene Creed or Apostles' Creed. Both are statements of faith and explains all that we believe. And lastly, we have the Universal Prayer, also called the Prayers of the Faithful, in which the faithful entrust God with their needs. Following the Liturgy of the Word, we have the Liturgy of the Eucharist, which starts with the presentation of the gifts and the preparation of the altar. Then there's the prayers over the offerings, the Eucharistic prayer, and the communion rites, which start with the Lord's Prayer, to sign a peace, Lamb of God, and finally communion. And the prayer after communion will conclude the Liturgy of the Eucharist. Starting the Liturgy of the Eucharist, as Tai prepares the altar, representatives of the people will bring forward the bread and wine that will become the body and blood of Christ. Then we have the prayer over the offerings, which concludes this preparation and readies all for the Eucharistic prayer. The Eucharistic prayer starts with the preface, then the Holy, 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 or Tang Tang Tang. Then the first half of the prayer includes the consecration. We go into the mystery of faith, and the second half of the prayer will end with the doxology. The Eucharistic prayer is the heart of the liturgy of the Eucharist. The prayers are offered to the Father by Christ, the priest. The communion rite follows and starts with the Lord's Prayer, also called the Our Father Prayer, or Ging Lai Jia. Then we have the sign of peace, where we will pray for the peace of Christ to fill our hearts. And as a sign of hope, the people will also extend a sign of peace to all those around them. Then we have the Lamb of God. In Vietnamese, Light Jin Tin Chua, which is sung by the people when the celebrant breaks the consecrated bread. And of course, following that, we have communion, where the people receive the body and blood of Christ. And lastly, we have the prayer after communion, which concludes the communion rite and asks that the benefit of the Eucharist will remain active in our daily lives. And lastly, we have the concluding rites, which starts with optional announcements, then the greeting and blessing, and then dismissal. If there aren't any optional announcements, like church news or updates, then Jia will do the greeting and blessing. And the blessing is always a Trinitarian, meaning he will say, May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in which we answer, Amen. And lastly, to conclude Mass is the dismissal, where the deacon dismisses the people. Those assembled are sent forth to bring the fruits of the Eucharist to the world. And just like during the entrance, the priest, deacon, and other ministers will then process away from the altar. Whoa, that was a lot of information, wasn't it? But at least now you know the general order of Mass. Now some Masses may be a little bit different based on the liturgical season or if they include some other rite like Confirmation or First Communion. All the information I got in this video is from USCCB. And again, I want to emphasize that though this was a long video, I only covered each part very briefly. So if you're still interested in learning more about what goes on during each part of Mass, I do encourage you to check out the links in the description below. As always, thank you for watching and learning with us. We'll see you on the next episode of Lavang 101. Peace out.